making add-ons. Let's start from zero. Here is what we're going to be covering. The required files for an add-on to launch, that being a something.lua file and a .toc file or table of contents file. In case you're curious what a .toc is, Blizzard made it up, they don't exist anywhere else, and that's why they're kind of hard to Google. We're going to cover how they should be formatted. I'm sure you've dug into some other add-ons before, and I bet they seemed pretty complicated. And that's because they are. They're big. They do fancy stuff, and they reference other people's fancy stuff. Anyways, here's the TOC file for DBM. Yeah, it's crazy. And what's all this shit do? Someone please help me. Let's check out a more basic add-on, and one that you have experience using. I prefer using this to details. Yes, that's right. Welcome back to 2007. It's time to check out Recount. Back to TOC files. If you want to make a small add-on, these are rather unimportant. Pay attention while I quickly cover this one line at a time. You want to understand that this is a list of references and that like three of them are required to launch your add-on. Anything next to a double pound sign is a metadata tag associated with the add-on. Meta like this definition, concerning information about its category. During your gameplay, you or one of your add-ons are able to check out this metadata. Anything with a single pound is a comment. Comments do nothing and are often worthless, just like opinions or helpful suggestions in RAID. Now for the next thing, interface number. Interface number means the version of the client that our add-on was last built to work for. Over time, they add and remove stuff from the add-on API. Things like <laughs> cast spell by name. In 2006, you could write an add-on that automated everything except for clicking a button. And I do mean a button because who couldn't assemble a bot using these four ingredients? The coordinates API, so that way you know where you are. Cast spell by name to, <laughs> well, cast spells of, by their names. Targeting commands, these of course still exist. And if statements. Remember when I said they take stuff out of the API over time? You can't use cast spell by name anymore, unless you're a hacker. Bots do this kind of stuff in order to implement themselves, if that's what you want to call it. Anyways, same goes for the coordinates API. If you're in an instance, you used to be able to get your coordinates in or out of instances, and DBM used to make use of this to find out how far away you are from people. Well, you know why DBM's not perfectly accurate? Because Blizzard doesn't want people getting their coordinates in instances, so they took that part out of the API, and so now DBM does some weird stuff to approximate coordinates. Now, you can still target stuff, like I said before, so that hasn't really changed, but you can't use conditional logic to automate all your decisions anymore, which is what I meant by the if statement comment up there, at least not in combat. Just check out this ancient footage of the original version of Healbot. Yeah, it used to actually bot your healing. You see that little panel popping up? It literally did everything for you. It picked who to heal and what the best spell was based on their missing health and mana efficiency. Absolutely hilarious. And this is why Blizzard controls us. All right, so all that related to the interface number in the TOC file. Blizz changes the client it bricks add-ons. They update the interface number in the client. If you don't update the same number here, then when you log in, your add-on won't load unless you click the mystery box, which contains undefined behavior. You can get the current interface number using this macro in game, slash run, the whatever. I'll put the macro in the YouTube video description, of course, but here it is in action. As you can see, if my interface number was not equal to this, I'd get the mystery box. And upon fixing this value, the mystery box goes away. Okay, now we don't need to get in on as many tangents anymore. You just, you need to make sure that you're going deep with your knowledge on this stuff because otherwise you're gonna end up lost at some point. Anyways, as for the other metadata tags, version, is the add-ons version. Title is what you want the name of your add-on to appear as in the list shown here. Otherwise, your add-on will be named after the folder slash TOC file combination you currently have. So, 
as you can see when we remove this line from recount it is still named recount because its folder is named recount so is its toc file now if we change the name of the toc file nothing works so yeah toc file and add-on folder must be the same you can then name your add-on by swapping out the title metadata tag in case you want to have different names between the folders the toc and the actual add-on anyways notes is just a note you can see it when you're looking over your add-ons in here doesn't do anything else you can make it whatever you want the government won't stop you now for another actually important thing that you need to remember save variables and save variables per character allows you to save data from one session to another what you're defining here is how you're gonna reference your save data in your Lua code this is a global variable basically but since it's Lua it's called a global table instead we'll get more into tables in just a bit in the case of recount they wrap the data with something provided by another library slash add-on. You can see this A stuff. Anyways, they're going to reference that name. You can see right here, it's from the TOC file. In this case, it's basically alias, which just means that they're changing the name of it, like the alias of a spy in case you aren't a programmer and don't use big words. All right, we can see that they reference properties of this data over and over again you can do the same stuff in your code i'll have more on this in the description here this is the last thing you got to keep in mind for a toc file other than the metadata tags which have two pound signs and comments which have one pound signed there are dependencies things we gotta load for the add-on to do stuff they are loaded in order from top to bottom if your files depend on other things other files have then the order of these may matter but for you as a new add-on programmer it's not gonna matter dude it's it's really not gonna matter just put your shit here in any order and don't have weird chains of dependencies last thing on metadata tags if you're looking at other people's code to learn remember these tags basically are just global variables that we can reference by name. So if you check this get add-on metadata doc page, you can see that you can get the value of any of these tags by putting in get add-on metadata, and then in this case, recount, and we're gonna check for the field x dash is based and as you can see we get the value true which is stored right here oh and yes by the way having the x and the dash in front of is based that's a requirement so if you want to roll your own stupid global variables you have to put a capital x and then a dash and then whatever you want your dumb variable name to be now is this enough for us to actually make an add-on yes it is although it of course isn't going to do too much because we haven't covered basically anything in the api however you can have a talk file that looks like this and you can have a completely empty lua file that's referenced in your talk file and your add-on will be able to successfully load all we have done here is literally get it to load but no real behavior Let's add in a hello world as is customary. Reload the UI. Remember, Lua is a scripting language ran with a just-in-time compiler. So when the UI reloads, it does have new behavior and you can see hello world. 